Why is it so hard to memorize the chromosome that each genetic disorder is on? Like VHL is on 3, uh, Huntington's on 4, CF on 7, Prater Willie on 15. Wouldn't it be easier if we just had one chromosome to remember? Over the past couple days, I've talked about why quizzing and spaced repetitions are such effective learning strategies, and how Anki addresses both of those. Now, as I alluded to in my last video, spaced repetition and quizzing is not easy. In fact, it can be quite difficult. However, that's actually a good thing. Studies have shown that passive learning strategies or easy learning strategies such as rereading or watching a video may feel productive in the moment, but actually doesn't lead to long-term retention. Paradoxically, long-term retention is actually more easily achieved by a difficult study strategy, like testing yourself. For example, if I had a flashcard that asked me, what chromosome is affected in cystic fibrosis? I might sit there and think, okay, well I know VHL affects chromosome three, and chromosome four is affected in Huntington's, and on 15 is Prater Willie. I think, I think it's seven. That, that actual process of retrieving the memory actually makes it more likely to stick longer term. It's interesting to note that even passive learning strategies that are made more difficult with smaller fonts, blurry images, or poor audio quality, the material taught in them is more likely to be retained than if those same concepts were taught with uh, legible font, clear pictures, and good sound quality. In the 1980s, they actually did studies to see how legibility affected reading comprehension. So group one in the study had a text that was very legible and easy to read and did not detract from the content of the passage. Group two, on the other hand, had a font size that was very small, as well as a style that was difficult to read. And I don't mean like Wing Ding's three difficult, but like Joker Man difficult. On top of that, there were words in the text that were actually missing letters. Now you might think that group one comprehended their passage better, but the studies actually found that the Passages that had more difficult fonts and texts and words with missing letters actually led to higher reading comprehension. The authors of the study actually theorized that the more difficult text forced the reader to slow down and think about what they were doing. Therefore, the more difficult text actually led to a longer term retention. What's interesting is that this actually applies to other study strategies as well. In a study that was done with 800 college students in an introductory psychology course, half of the class was asked to make study materials simply by copying what the professor already had. The other half of the class was asked to write it in their own words. Those who wrote it in their own words ended up scoring a half a letter grade better than their peers who just copied the material. Now, this is actually why I highly recommend that people make their own flashcards when studying for step one or anything else. It's not to say that there isn't some use in using pre-made decks, but it does, it does end up giving you an edge if you make your own. And that edge might be the difference between scoring a 240 and a 250. Here's another disclaimer. There is a threshold for desired difficulty. If something is too hard and it produces so much anxiety that you can't even focus, this is not good difficulty. In fact, you do not want this level of difficulty. For difficult study strategies to be effective, you have to be comfortable with failure. You have to be comfortable with getting answers wrong. Incorrect test questions and failed practice exams should be looked at opportunities to learn and grow. In France, they did a study with sixth graders where they gave them a very difficult anagram that none of them could solve. Afterwards, half of the class was told that struggling and getting wrong answers was part of learning and it was nothing to be ashamed of. The other half of the class just talked about how they felt after doing such a difficult exam. Afterwards, the two groups were given an exam that tested working memory. Those that were told it was okay to struggle and it was okay to fail and that was all part of the learning process did significantly better than those who had just talked about how the exam went. So as you're going through your Anki decks and you get the same concept wrong day after day after day, 
Just remember that this is a process and that you're more likely to retain that material come test day than if you had just reread it and done something more comfortable. So that marks the end of today's video. It is the last in the series of the science behind Anki. Over the next several days, I'm actually gonna get into the more technical aspects of how to download it, how to use add-ins, how to set up a custom study schedule. So be on the lookout for those. If you liked this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, please let me know in the comments below.